So specific heat capacity has four terms in the equation. It gets a little bit complicated. So we've got delta E. So delta just means change in. So we're looking at the change in thermal energy. Sometimes some other exam boards use delta Q to be this thermal energy. And then we've got MC delta theta. So this is our change in temperature. And the Greek letter theta um, can be used for temperature or we can use the ca letter capital T. Depends what your exam board's using. So for the first one, uh, we're just looking at identifying the numbers from in the question. We put it in to find that to two significant figures, we've either got 12,000 or 880 joules. We've then rearranged this to make MC or delta theta the subject. And for this question here, it's a case of um, finding which of these is the right equation, putting the numbers in, and then for all of my answers, these are the actual raw bits of data here, which I've then... Um, rounded down to two significant figures for my answers over here, okay? I couldn't quite fit in which of these equations I was using just on the space over here, but if you're doing this, you can use some scrap paper, you maybe might be writing your answers in your book. So these are how I approach those questions. Then we looked at, um, again, these ones over here. It's a case of maybe identifying the right information from the question. Um, the specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And this is going to be used all the time. Often the value for water comes up in questions. So I just multiplied my five kilograms by the specific heat capacity, multiplied by the change in temperature, 15 minus three, to get 250,000 joules. Now for the next one, um, if the temperature were to drop by half the amount, the change in energy would also be half. That's absolutely true, because effectively, if you've got half the change in temperature, you'd then have half the change in energy, so the student's correct. For the next one, again, we have to identify the data from the question, and we work out, we're trying to find out what the mass is, so I've just used that equation rearranged like this to find it's six and a half kilograms. This one over here, um, mercury, I've spilt it in the lab before. Um, now, often you do it over a grapnel tray to catch any drops, but occasionally it does get spilt, and it's not a big issue. You get some uh, powdered sulfur, that absorbs it, and then you can then uh, get it into the bin and kind of um, properly disposed of appropriately. But the first one, we just want to find out the change in energy, which was 270 joules. And you'll notice for this one over here, by the way, this is not a scientific approach but we're using the raw data in the subsequent part of the calculation, not the rounded down value. So I'm using 272.16 for this part of the calculation, which gives a value of 60 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And the last one about aluminium, there's a bit of a red herring. You don't need to know about the density when it comes to looking at specific heat capacity. So what we find is that the change in energy um, causes a change in temperature of about 15 degrees Celsius, but we want to know its final temperature. And that's where you add the 15 to the initial value of 15 to get to the final value of 30. I suspect most people will do this bit correctly, but they forget to do that last step. So that's the first worksheet looking at specific heat capacity.